What's up, YouTube? My name is Paul Rees, aka RavDude90. I'm the Pokemon BGC 2018 World Champion. Welcome to my third episode of this series I've called the BGC Battle Academy, where this is a series where we team build a team from the start and then we test it out at Battle Spot and we fix it uh, along all the, the episodes and then we change to another team, building from the start and test it out as well in the Battle Spot. If you haven't already, go and check it out my first episode where I team build this team we're using right now and my second episode we played our, our first game in Battle Spot and we started the series with a win. We're gonna play right now our second episode with this team. I hope you all enjoy this content guys. We're gonna choose the team which is here and then we're gonna we're ready to go. We're gonna start. Uh, this is a Solgaleo and Cernia's team, both restricted, um, goes really well together actually, I don't know why people is not using this this uh, lion here, the power of the lion, he is really strong, of course you have to, you have to use it well and use it effectively with the partners, we find our first opponent of the day, a Japanese opponent with a X and Y combination, with Cernas, Eveltal, Incinerator, Stakataka, Cortana, and Tapulele. We're gonna see. Um, okay, how do we leave this? He could leave the Eveltal and Incinerator combo. I'm kind of worried about the Stakataka, to be honest. Since my Solgaleo doesn't have Earthquake or Superpower. But I think my overall best lead is Tapufini and maybe with Cernas. I can taunt Incinerator, it's good in the back. Um, and Solgaleo for the Cernas and Sakataka. Yeah, I have fake out pressure. I can switch the terrain in case I need. I switch Alfini and then switch it in again. And so Galio is good overall for the Cartana, for the Cernas, for the Lele. I think Sakataka is coming to this game though. I don't know if I should bring another water like Ludicolo. But we're gonna we're gonna see. So we're gonna start our second battle with this team guys. I hope you all like my content. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Go and check my first and second video as well and leave a like if you enjoy my content. Our Japanese friend here. We start the game with Cernias and Tapufini, double double fairy, and he decides to begin with Staka Taka and Ivelto. Okay, so he can go for the trick room. It's something I'm worried right now I have scout not gonna do that much but at least 40% but I'm gonna go for the town first I'm gonna town this Takataka and switch Cernas to Incinerator in that way next turn have the fake out but he can switch Lele to prevent the fake out so we're gonna see what my opponent decides to do. Incinerator to intimidate the Stakataka is always nice. I don't think he's gonna use Rock Slide in front of Cernias. He might go for knockoff the Cernias slot. Oh, it's a special level tell. Going for the Tapu Fini actually? Trying to flinch me? Maybe? Um, maybe going for a Gyrovo in the Cernias slot. Who is gonna. Who is going for the Trick Room? Okay. And now I'm gonna scout you. You can pretty much switch um, switch the Incinerator as well, or the Cartana, to prevent a type of Fini doing a lot of damage. So he has um, the Leaf Flip pressure in the next turn, but I don't know what should Incinerator do here. I might go for, for the Flare Blitz. I'm going for a knockoff on the Stakasaka slot. I don't mind taking a rock slide. Anything that's coming. 
Maybe switching Tabulele. Yeah, breaking a fake out. I don't. I didn't have any reason to go for the fake out there, to be honest. Since we're going for a knockoff and um, scout. This is actually better, so scout can get a burn on Stakataka. Doing like 65%. Didn't get a burn, but we knock off something here. The safety goggles. He goes for the rock slide. Okay, now we have to choose. Do we switch out Lele, I mean Tapufini, or do we switch out Incinerator so we have Fake Out, um, fake out and Intimidate Pressure, Fake Out Pressure and Intimidate Support next turn. So Galio is a pretty safe, um, pretty safe switching in the Tapufini slot. And I'm gonna go for a uh, knockoff as well in the stack attacker. If my opponent decides to target the incinerator with a moonblast, maybe if the Tapulele suspects, choice specs, nah, but he decides to target the Sogalio which 4 times resist psychic. And we knock off the stack attacker, so we are fine. We're actually fine, but now Rebelto comes in again. We have to protect Solgaleo. My opponent can very well predict that, but we don't mind. We have to keep safety Solgaleo and winning the Intimidate pressure. And my opponent reveals to be the Psychic C set with his Rebelto. We now protect and switch Tapufini, there's no drawback in doing that. So next turn we switch out to Galio in the belt in the with the for the incinerator, excuse me. And we have Tapufini now we play from there. We we need to find a way to bring our Cernia's safety and maybe even with fake out support. Now that Stakataka he predicts the switch and goes for a psychic, getting a critical hit on top of that. He doubles the incinerator slot, which is fine. I don't mind, he gets double critical hit, guys. Like Shady Penguin would have said, it's a crit! Double crit, man! Um, well now, I don't mind switching the Incinerator here, and we go for uh, Skull, fishing the, fish the burn here, we're basically sacking Tepufini here, he brings the Cernias, and maybe goes for a, for a, Dark type attacking the Solgaleo slot, risking that. He's risking, risking a uh, speed tie, speed ties, speed tears. Excuse me. He's risking my Solgaleo to be faster than his Veltel, which is not a good, good choice to be honest. To be honest. Um. Can we get a burn? Okay. At least it's something. Well, this Veltel has revealed to have um, only special attack moves. Maybe he has knockoff. What if Veltel doesn't have knockoff? And now we can fake out or we can go for the rower in the certain slot. Um, or we can go for a haze and. We can go for Haze and a Road or Haze and a Flare Blitz. We can go for Haze and Flare Blitz because my opponent can predict, yeah, can predict a Road or something. So we go for Flare Blitz there and Haze, even with the Cernias, protect. Like in this case, we remove the boost 
from the sidekick seat that Ivelta has. So it's overall a good a good turn for me. As we flare blitz there. Now my opponent um could attack the Fini, I guess. Um what do we do here? I don't want to give it a certain as a free boost, so I might have to roll it. And go for. Uh, go for Skull. We're going for Skull, even we do. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted to see if my Incineroar had rolled the previous turn, we didn't reveal it, we didn't have to, now he will most likely try to kill Tepufini with the Veltel, yep, but as I expected, the Veltel didn't get the KO, but we scald the Cernias and we will do damage and we got a critical hit which is nice because he had he got two crits it's a crit so now we are just fine in the game tapulele is maybe scarf now we sack tapufini basically and I don't know. Do we knock off here? We knock off the Lele that we go for Moonless. Do we target? Do we target the ins the Veltel? Do we target the Tapu Lele? I think we target the Veltel and let Tapufini die so we can put it in range of Dazzling Gleam yeah we're fine we flare with uh, Velto and now we most likely put it in range of a Dazzling Gleam let's see Mm. So Dazzling Gleam, let's see if it's a bulky Belto. Do we go for Dazzling Gleam or we go for... I want to save in order for fake up pressure. The thing is, is the Ibelto faster? If the Ibelto is faster and he goes for Dark type attack in the Incinerator slot and catching my so Galway switching, I pretty much lose the game. Um, yeah. I think I don't have to uh, risk Solgaleo, so we go for the Flare Blitz and uh, Dazzling Gleam here. Let's see who is faster. Tapu Lele goes for a Dazzling Gleam, gets another crit. This is a crit critical game. He went for the Dark type attack, trying to catch most likely the, the Solgaleo switching. I didn't have to risk anything. We get the KO, and it is Solgaleo in front of two fairies. And this is pretty much game over. And the Tapulele is most likely Choice Scarf. We don't have to worry about possible Shadow Ball. Is there a way I can lose this? Let me see, because I can throw a game. You can always throw a 100%, 99% win. 
if you play bad your last turns. So I, I might be faster. I'm gonna protect the Cernias and go for a Sunsteel Strike in the Lele. If my opponent get a double critical hit, maybe, but he decides to forfeit. And we get the win. Um, targeting the Stakataka first turn was the first and second turn was uh, crucial for this game. Or Cernias can be safe. The late game, mid or late game. Also, Town to Buffini put in work. As, as I already said in my first and my second video, I changed I see when in Tapufini for Chant because I thought that in some cases like this, for example, having the option to stop Trick Room is way better and overall more important than Icy Win since I already have Icy Win with Ludicolo and I have another form of speed controls with Salamence for example with Tailwind and Bulldoze. So having the town option is overall more important for the team as you have seen in this battle. Okay guys we're gonna analyze the match we just had. I wanna mention that the most important part of this series is not only playing and winning but it is actually understand the way you play and learning to analyze the matches. That's why the match analysis is something I wanted to include in this series so you guys can learn the perspective I normally analyze my own matches and what I want to share with you. Analyzing your own battles is a really important part of your training. It doesn't matter if you win or lose guys, it is always recommended that you ask yourself what did you do wrong in the match, what did you do right? What did your opponent do that put him in an unnecessary disadvantage, maybe, that without that you would have lose? So don't always think that winning is the most important part in BGC, because it is not. The most important part, in my opinion, is learning to analyze the matches while you play them and try to play consistently. I normally like to lead something solid that gives me the more options possible to develop my game plan and at the same time to stop the possible game plans my opponent have. For this, it's important to have in mind when you lead not only turn 1 but also turn 2 and even turn 3 if you are more experienced. And for that, it is crucial not only the lead combination but what you bring in the back. Sometimes making your game plan can be a way to stop the game plans your opponent may have since you are forcing him to react to what you do. This is a common characteristic of hyperoffense for example but other times, it is better to stop the plan your opponent have while in the process putting yourself in an advantageous position. In this battle, I let Cernias and Tepufini have it in mind that lead covers everything from my opponent's end, barring a Cartana lead, so for that, I also Galio and Incineroar in the back. If my opponent decides to lead Double Steel, for example, Cartana and Sakataka, I had in mind that a double switch in turn 1 would have countered that. If my opponent decided to go for an Incinero Sarnia's lead, for example, I knew Tapufini was crucial because of the haste option and I knew lead Sarnia's was needed in order to put pressure on the Ibeltal in case he decides to lead with it. Thinking long term is always important guys, that's why I used Town on Sakataka in turn 1 to stop the Trick Room since I knew I didn't have a lot of answers to Trick Room. And after that, in turn 2 I tried to knock the Stakataka out as soon as possible, knowing that Cernias could be safe once the Stakataka goes down. So Incinera was a safe switching in turn 2 to intimidate the Stakataka and also cause it handles Ivelta really well and I could put pressure on the Staka while at the same time put pressure with Flare Blitz on the Ivelta to put it in range of a fairy type attack later. One thing important I want to mention guys, when you face an opposite Cernias, it is always important to have something at the field that can pressure or disrupt it. In my case, Tepufini and Incineroar both can nullify its boosts with Haze and Roll respectively, so always having at least one of them at the field was crucial in my game plan. At the beginning of the match, I didn't realize the Veltal was faster than my Cernias because of the ability orders, so there was a turn in the match where I was thinking and risking a Solgaleo switching. I want to emphasize this turn guys, when you don't know who is faster in a match, 
the most optimal play is to not risk it and play safe unless you are completely forced to risk but in this case I didn't want to risk the Eveltal being faster and use a dark type attack into the incinerator slot predicting a possible switching. If that would have been the case I would have lost the game. Of course if I would have known that Eveltal revealed to be faster in the first turn I wouldn't have even considered a switching but not knowing that in this case was actually the best way to show you guys how to play Optima when you don't know the speed of your opponent but you don't actually need to risk it being faster than you. There are moments in a battle when risking something can give you a faster way to put the battle in your favor, of course, and maybe even give you the win. But if things don't go as expected with that prediction, you can throw a game that was already in your favor or at least wasn't in your opponent's favor. So playing safe is not always the best option, but in most cases it is, especially when you don't need to risk anything. In this match guys, I knew that keeping Solgaleo's safety for the late game was my win condition since my opponent had double fairy, so I knew I had to target the stack attacker and the belt up first, so Solgaleo could be a solid answer in the late game. That's it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed the content, please show your support by leaving a like on the video, subscribe if you haven't already, share this with your friends, and until next time guys, peace.